How's it going everybody? Corbin here. Thanks for checking out the video today. I'm excited to share this one with you. This is a pretty easy DIY project uh, that has absolutely transformed our bedroom here. As you can see behind this wall, we decided to go with a dark accent wall again uh, and it is uh, phenomenal. So I'm excited to share the progress of this room with you and walk you through everything that we did to create what you see behind us. Let's jump right in. After we got all of our stuff out of the way, the first step was to measure where we wanted all of our boards to go for this particular wall. As you can see, I'm just holding the measuring tape while my wife is taking blue tape and marking each point where we want the boards to go. Okay, and on this top corner, basically what I've done is I've gone through and I've done a 45 degree uh, miter cut. This just makes it a lot more clean when you're coming up against like this. Instead of this side kind of button up against here, gives it a little bit more professional look. That's something I learned when I did my first walls. I didn't do this. and. Uh, it definitely makes it a lot cleaner. Opposed to doing something like this where it just butts up against it, the joint is a lot more visible and harder to kind of go through and spackle and caulk. So I uh, definitely recommend doing those 45 degrees just to make it clean. So the first step with this wall is you're gonna wanna go through and do your border essentially first. So I'm doing all the outside pieces. As you can see, I'm just adding some liquid nails to the back of this. And then after I apply the liquid nails and put it on the wall, then I will then go back with a brad nailer and brad nail the boards onto the wall. If you're curious, I am using a one by two MDF board. I will make sure to link down the full supplies that I used down below, including the tools and uh, supplies that I had to buy. The great news is this wall did cost less than $200 to actually build with the supplies. Uh, that doesn't include the tools, of course, but I'm assuming maybe you have a couple of tools laying around. As you're adding your border pieces, if you notice that your wall isn't super level or very straight, don't worry, you can go back and fix that later with some caulking, so it's not the end of the world. I do highly recommend using a brad nailer for this project. As you can see, that's what I'm using. It just makes adding the boards to the wall so much easier. Your nail holes are super small and easy to fill in. And it's just honestly the best way to kind of go. Mine's the, the Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer. Um, I'll link that down below as well if you're interested. Do you find it best though to still apply some liquid nails to the back of the board just for extra support with the combination of the brad nails? You'll probably notice that I didn't remove my baseboards. Instead, what I, what I decided to do was cut the MDF board at a 45 degree angle on the bottoms of each of the, bo uh, the MDF boards. That way it didn't hang off the baseboard when I installed it to the wall. We did have the 45 degree cuts on the bottom and to make it easier to paint later, um, I don't know if you can see that there, but we went through and just painted the bottom tips so that when we go through and paint it, it'll be a lot easier. Can you see that? Um, and that's why we kind of went through and did that. And again, you'll notice on the top there, I did cut the top at a 45 degree angle as well so that it fit in nice and snug with the top of that border on the outside edge. Once again, just a reminder, your wall may not be perfectly straight. So when you're adding the boards, there may be kind of gaps in between the board and the wall. Don't worry, you can fix that later with the caulk. And here's what that edge looked like after everything was all done. Now that the edge is done, it is now time to go on to the more fun part and do the middle. You will notice that there is texture on our wall. There are a couple of different ways you can get rid of the texture if you would like. We opted to just keep the texture because I actually really like the way it looks, but you could do a couple of things like um, skim the wall or add a piece of smooth MDF plywood or board. Uh, just know doing one of these steps is gonna make the process a lot longer. So the fact that I like the texture is good for me because it means the project is a little bit easier, um, but it's all down to personal preference. For the next part, when you're hanging up these boards, I do recommend cutting each piece individually because your wall will vary in length as you go through. For instance, some of these were 91 inches, some of them were 90 and a half, I believe. If you're curious, the spacing between each board for this wall is 18 and a half inches. And as I mentioned, I'm using one by two MDF board for the boards that you're seeing here. In order to make sure your boards stay straight and they have even spacing, I do recommend cutting out just a little spacer block, as you can see here that I'm using, just to keep everything consistent. It will also be very helpful to keep a level handy to make sure that they stay vertical as well.
my least favorite part, caulking and spackling. So we got the dry deck spackling here and then uh, the uh, DAP caulking that we're going to use. So I'm going to go through and get all these top little cracks up here. So it looks like one connected piece. As you see, I already said to this corner. And we're going to go through and add all the nails up in here. spackle to take care of like as you can see on this edge this wall is pretty bowed so we have this gap right here so we need to go through and add some caulking there and then also on the insides to, to kind of cover up these lines and make the wall look very built-in look that's where the caulk comes in play so we're gonna go through and do that essentially along every outside piece after all the caulking was done and dried out it was now time to paint if you're curious the paint color is shadow mountain by bear we didn't use a paint sprayer or anything for this project. I do need to buy one because I think it would make this wall look even better. But we did just use a brush and a roller to go through and paint this entire wall. So there you have it, our bedroom makeover, all done in actually one day that was all completed. I think this took us around four or five hours, so we got it done in one day. It did cost us less than $200 to complete. So if you found uh, this video fun or entertaining or you liked it, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And uh, also if you wanted more projects just like these, be sure to check out these couple of videos as well and we'll see you in the next video. And seriously, thank you so much for all the support.